everybody and welcome! Last week on this channel we looked at a mod for Kerbal Space Program called Parallax and this was the rover I tested on Duna and it had a little bit trouble getting across the new terrain. So I decided to follow up on that with, well at least my method of trying it maybe, maybe a little bit better. And in order to do this in well, typical Kerbal Space Program style, we're using a very wobbly rocket. Okay, first stage is gone, and the wobble has decreased a little bit, at least. That's a good thing. Well, that's not a good thing. Something exploded, and it was a few of my engines, which I need, which of course means... Again! Again! Again. It took me a while of tweaking and adjusting, but in the end I managed to find a design that did not blow my engines up. And then, yeah, of course we could set some solar sails and get on our merry way. Where are we headed, you might ask? Well, we're going once again to Duna, because I showed you how difficult it was to get around the terrain with that tiny rover last time. And let's see if we can get it better this time with what hides under the payload fairing. Well, not really the payload fairing, inside the lander vehicle, which you will see in just a few minutes or one minute. I don't know, I have no idea how long this video is going to be. But first we have to get to Duna, which we're doing here. Thanks to the atmosphere of this planet, we can of course use the aero braking maneuver by using atmospheric friction to slow us down in, well, this time a little bit of an inclined orbit, which is not as nice as I would have liked, so I had to do some adjustments, but it was all good and well, because we arrived where we wanted to be. And now we disengage the lander from our transfer stage. Come on, get out of there. And once that is done, we can get a better look at what we're actually dealing with today. Yes, this is one of the reasons why the craft was so wobbly. I'm using a lot of the robotic parts. This is just this is just a little taste of what's coming because there is a lot of stuff still in there. And unfortunately, robotics in Kerbal Space Program are, let's just say, not the most reliable of tools available. Anyhow, we're trying to get now down to the surface. I'm heading to this big canyon there, and I'm not sure if I ever visited this specific location of Duna, so I think it was at least for me a first time visit on this corner of the planet. Parachutes are basically just there to, to kill some of the velocity and orient us that we are really pointing downwards with the engines. And the engines are just there to, well, not just, they are mainly there to reduce our velocity so we don't break everything. And look at that! What a beautiful view with the moon Ike in the background. Yes, and this is what's hiding inside. And you can already see the rocks are causing a few problems also for the lander. But nothing that we can handle and the rover is now headed outside and deploying. Boom, we got the wheels extended and as you can see it's a lot bigger than last time. This is a all-terrain machine. But we also need some pilots, or at least drivers, to uh, control this thing. And here we got our engineer heading down my contraption of ladders. Until he decided this was too tedious and just jumped down. Thank god Kerbals have such a sturdy helmet. I wonder, would a Kerbal always fall on his helmet like cats would always fall on their feet? Because those helmets are so bulgy and potentially heavy that I would imagine if a Kerbal falls from anywhere, he would always fall on his head, which is also the biggest part of its anatomy. So yeah, that would make sense, doesn't it? What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Okay, our scientists, being a scientist, is of course a lot smarter, but... Uh, <laughs> 
not that good with controlling his jetpack, so he also fell down. But in the end he came back into the rover as well and then we can get along with the engineer and get going with our exploration. What we want to do is find out if the contraption I produced here is better at roving around the terrain that is now available with the new Parallax mod. Because it does make driving around on planets a lot harder. You can already see that we're bumping around on these little rocks and there are big ones in the background, but those little ones are not a problem. Because those robotic parts, they kind of act as a little bit of an, a suspension addition, but not really because everything is wobbly and yeah, the wheels are just skidding around like they were made of Teflon or something. Kerbal Space Program 2 developers, should you be watching this, please make wheel friction better in the sequel to this game. All right, and let's see what we can do with these articulating wheels here. Look at that, the rover is lifting its paw. Oh, nice. And the idea here was that I would lift the front wheel and drive over that rock. But since the wheels don't have friction, yeah, that doesn't work. Also, something else that Parallax makes harder for players is finding small surface features. Look at that Duna Berry, Duna Blueberry, Duna Dingleberry, I have no idea what they're called. But these little, little uh, surface features that you can scan with the scanning arm and get some valuable science from them. And let's try again if we can get across one of these big rocks and... Yeah, it works somehow. This this suspension mechanism does its thing, but it would be a lot better if wheels would actually behave like wheels in Kerbal Space Program. Once we get where we wanted to go and grab all the science that we want to have, what shall we do? How do we get back? Well, nothing easier than that. Let's get back to the vehicle and just grab the rover on the docking port and pull it back inside. Yep, this is designed to be fully reusable. Well, not fully, because we threw most of the booster away, but I meant the lander and rover, of course. Come on, get back in there. And once we've done that, we're gonna close up this enclosure. <laughs> and once again... Scraping on the bottom because our wobbly feet, thanks to the uh, thanks to the robotic parts inside, uh, are still wobbling around. And yeah, we don't have that much stability as I would have liked. But it doesn't matter. We still get back into orbit and rendezvous with our main craft. There it is in the background. There it is a little bit closer. And there it is, very close now. And now we're gonna perform our docking maneuver there we go this could now go on to elu or the moon or whatever provided there is some refueling stop in between for the lander because it's pretty empty now and i don't br I didn't bring any reserve or, or at least not a lot of reserves with it so that's my idea of how to get around on duna and parallax what do you think would a mech or something like that be better? How, what's your mode of transportation across the new surfaces that Parallax provides us? Let me know in a comment. I'm really interested in how you solve this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.